testimony. I, I was sitting back there just thanking God because no matter how unworthy, I can relate to all you're saying. No matter how unworthy we feel we are, no matter what, God always comes through. That's right. I remember myself as a, probably in my 20s, when my kids were all little, and I could probably remember it. I remember like it's yesterday, lining my babies up for church and sitting in the, in the church house and seeing God move. And then if there's times in my life where I felt like I was going through the motions. I think I even preached on it last night about how we go through the motions and we feel like that we're so far away from you. We feel like we're walking through a wilderness that we can't uh -huh. even see out of. Amen. But oh my God, how Come worthy on. he is. Yeah, amen. And you might wonder why am I getting, I can't even explain it myself. Why I'm getting so excited about what soul that got saved last night. Come on. But when this man came into the nursing home about six months ago, he brought his wife in there. Her name's Peggy. She helps me. She helps sing and stuff. And he said, he says, I don't really, he said, I'm only bringing her in here for her. He says, this Jesus thing, he says, whatever makes you guys happy. But he says, I can't really grab hold of it. Come on. And he sat there for six months listening to the preaching and listening to the singing. Amen. And I can't say, that's the reason I say that, is because I can't say that it's anything. Because there have been times, Sister Donna, that I went in and gone through the motions Amen. and thought that I was, you know, trying to get a hold of God. But not knowing how sometimes. And just reading the scriptures and praying and saying, God, help me to lead these people. But last night we had over 30 people there. And their whole place was crying and clapping their hands when this man raised his hands up. And he said, God, I give it all. Praise God. And I thought, Lord Jesus, and his wife, the Lord, and I it, it was just amazing. It was just amazing. But it didn't just do something for him. It did something for me. Yeah, I, I said, God, despite myself, despite all my downfalls, despite everything, God, the one thing that I've always held dear to my heart since I, since I was that little kid that had my babies next to me, is I always knew that the love of God was what was important. Yeah. Yeah. All the other stuff didn't matter, but the That's love of right. God is what needed to be preached. To. Right. And I said, God, if I ever go forward for you now, I'll preach your word and I'll preach in yeah. love the way God wants Amen. it. I'm not gonna. I feel like I've been let out of prison, yeah. and the love has been let loose, Amen. and the people. It's just overshadowing people, and I don't care. I want to tell the whole world. I, I knew that man was going to run out of there. I knew he was going to tell the whole world that he'd been saved. And I want to run out and tell the whole world he's been saved. And the Bible says that all the angels are rejoicing. I thank him and I praise him. He's a good God.
30 seconds right there. And just say, I remember the day he touched me.
moment right there. That's it. Woo! That felt good. Thank you. Yeah. Start carrying the Bible everywhere we go. Amen. 
Amen. I believe that with all my heart. If you're in Ezekiel 37, say amen again. Amen. 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 The hand of the Lord was upon me. Isn't that good? Amen. amen. How many has ever felt like the hand of God was on their life? Yes. Amen. All right, we're going to preach tonight. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. Oh, somebody let me underline that. Amen. Come on. Caused me to pass by them. Nobody wants to go to cemetery, do they? Amen. Nobody wants to look around those things. Round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Okay. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, Thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay shinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 7. So I prophesied. As I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the shinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Amen. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, Amen. and stood on their feet, an exceeding great army. You may be seated. I want to speak for just a little while, a minute. I know that what we're seeing here with Ezekiel, he's a prophet, he's a preacher, he's a man of God. In this time period, I know that God is showing him, I believe in all my heart, Israel. Israel at that time was a church. It was the people of God that God had delivered. But because of things in their life, they had been scattered. That's right. I know that you can go with the theology Look at this and know that in 1957 that Israel came back together from being scattered. This week the Lord began to deal with me because I sometimes go to church with people and they'll tell me about their church and they'll talk about visiting churches or trying to find a church. Churches that seem dry. Churches that seem dead. Churches that just seem like there's no spirit there anymore. I look around in America today and we become really scattered. I see God doing a work, no doubt, with His people today. I see God moving in the midst of people. I see how God wants to work. I believe that with all my heart. I believe God is always looking for a good man or woman. I believe God is always looking for a church. I know when I, I went on the internet this week, actually I went today, I had a day off today, and I called a few people and talked to them, but I went on the internet and looked up anointed preaching. If you ever go on the internet to listen to preaching, if you don't put in keywords like that, folks, you don't know what you're going to get. But even whenever I went to anointed preaching on dry bones in the valley, uh, just about everybody wanted to tear their church up when they preached this. They wanted to preach how we're dry, how we won't shout, and all this. And I thought, I can't find nothing that supports how God dealt with me on this. So I finally just closed my computer and got down and prayed and said, Lord, I'm just going to count on you tonight. Because I don't want to preach on them dry bones necessarily. I want to preach on Ezekiel. I want to preach on this young preacher. I want to preach on this minister. I want to talk about him for a little while because the Bible says the hand of God was on him. That's right. I believe in our generation there's many that are feeling the hand of God up on them. I know that we've seen times in the past where people show up and the hand of God wasn't on them. But Ezekiel said, the hand of the God was upon me. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon me. I, I want you to look at that. Because when God leads somebody, Amen. oh, you don't get to pick 
gets where he sends you. Yeah. I thought about when God calls a, a pastor, you don't get to pick the church. Not when you're led by the Spirit. Right. When you're called to preach, you might want to look around and say, you know, I want something that's real. I want something that's thriving. I want something that's settled and, and established. And God didn't pick Ezekiel for that. God called that man to preach. I believe with all my heart and picked him up in the Spirit and said, this is your church, son. And he set him down right there in the valley. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but now when God really gets real with you and you really get real with God, God will put you places and he'll, he'll put you in a place where maybe you don't know why you're there to start with. I imagine with Sister Carla, there's been times she looked at her ministry and just thought, what are you doing, Lord? I, I know with me, I sure have. But you don't always get to pick. When you got a calling on your life, you don't get to pick who it is you sing to, yeah. who you pray to, who you lay hands on. When the hand of God's upon your life, like He said, He said He set Him. He put Him there. I like that very much in the midst of the valley. There was full of bones. Basically, He said, you're, I'm sending you to pastor or to preach, but this thing that you're going to have to raise up is dead. Oh, somebody say amen. That's right, amen. Now look where it says, and He calls me to pass by. I'm going to get in this in a minute. But this is where our church has got to get back to. Way too many today that has not reached out, has not went to the wrong side of the tracks, has not looked down on the downhearted and the downtrodden. Those that really ain't got much and those that have what they do have. They're so addicted to something they'll spend every dime just to fulfill that need in their life because they ain't got God. Yeah. God created us, I believe, with a void that only God could fill in our life. Yeah. And many today have searched for something that's real and they'll turn to drugs or alcohol, but it's so short-lived. Oh my God, because they need God down in their life. But the Bible said He calls me. I can't, I don't know if you can picture this. I wish I had a big giant picture of what the skeleton look like laying in a valley because when the preacher arrived on the scene maybe he didn't want to go over there and take a closer look but it said that the spirit of the Lord he made me, he calls me to take a hard look. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. Maybe you're going through something in your life and maybe when you look at it it don't look too good but I'm telling you the truth you need to take a good hard look at it. Oh my God I feel this down inside. You need to take a good hard look at where God's placed you and where you stand today. Look down here in a minute. I want to, I want to throw this in in verse 2. It says that they were very many in an open valley. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Amen. You know what that means? Let me explain it to you for just a moment. Those bones, those very dry, those bones down there that died, they weren't supposed to be dead. If they were supposed to be dead, I'll prove it by the Bible. They, those bones should have been in a tomb. In America today, if they're supposed to have been dead, they should have been about four foot under the earth. But they're laying on the earth. Something had happened down there. I don't know what happened down there. But I, I can picture in my mind just looking around today, all the fighting and all the wars. I can look around today and see how, how we're so scattered. And, oh, even, even within in each denomination, we're scattered. Yep. I'm all just a Baptist, had the First Baptist and Second Baptist and United Baptist and Free Will Baptist and, and the wrong side of town Baptist. I don't know, whatever you want to call them. And then all of a sudden I went to the Pentecost church and we had the Cleveland assembly and, and we have this assembly and we have the First Assembly and we have the ones that's making and the ones that ain't assembly. I mean, we're so scattered, it just it's amazing to me. But you know what? So many things are dead today that God didn't kill. God set Ezekiel down there and he said, can these bones live? Uh, Ezekiel looks at them and they're dead, but they ain't supposed to be dead. Yeah. How many of you are going through something that you see dead, but you know you ain't supposed to be dead? Yeah. How many times you've been involved with somebody and it just seems like that nothing's going to get better and it's dead, but you know it ain't supposed to be dead? I'm telling you, there's people that are still, still in this world today that feel dead. But God says they ain't dead. There's churches today in America that feel like they're dead. But they ain't supposed to be dead. Preach with me a minute. I know what I'm trying to get to. Ezekiel's looking at something that has died. But God said, I didn't kill it. Oh, it's not buried. It's not in a tomb. It ain't supposed to be dead. When I look around at people today, and people say, Brother Robert, I don't think things will get no better. Well, you need to get away from me. 
name because I serve a God that's able. My God, when people say, I don't think the marriage can make it, I say it can make it. If you get a hold of God, when somebody says, I don't know how my family's going to make it, I'll tell them you can make it. My God, he looked around there and they were in the open valley. Dead things in the open valley. Dead things that ain't even been covered up. Oh, come on now. Dead things. I want you to look at the very next verse. Verse 3, and he said on, on me, Son of man, can these bones live? I talked to a preacher this week about what God was doing with me about this verse. He says, Son of man, can these bones live, Sister Dunn? Oh, I thought about all the times in the Bible that man would inquire of God. I thought about David down there in Ziklag where the enemy had come in. David said, get me to Ephah. I've got to get a hold of God. And he prays and says, shall I pursue? And God says, pursue. I thought about all the time with Moses. Whenever he had to go out through the wilderness. And he'd say, God, what should I do? God, they ain't got no water. God, they ain't got no food. God, the enemy's behind us and we're at the Red Sea. How many times did, did we inquire of the Lord? Why not? God tells us. He says, come, let us reason together. But here he asked the Son of Man. He asked Ezekiel. He asked the preacher. Listen to me if you don't get anything else tonight. What about when God asks you instead of you asking God? Yeah. Oh, why would God ask man can these bones live? Oh, why would God do that? Why would He take the time and say, Brother Robert, uh, can that church be revived? Hey, can that church be revived? Brother Robert, can revival come down yeah. from Ohio? Yeah. Can the drug dealer get saved? Can, yeah. can, can is that God here is inquiring of man. Because when the hand of the Lord is upon you and you're sent by the Spirit, the very first thing you're going to have to do is be tested by the Lord. Because the moment you say, oh yeah, they can, God will say, then go ahead and do it. Come on, preach me. Why are we supposed to speak, to speak faith? You don't need to speak faith to God. You need to speak faith to people. You need to get real with God. Amen. When I, I can picture it in my mind. I prayed this week. And if Ezekiel had said, Oh, yeah, Lord. Oh, yeah, we can have a revival right here. We'll set a camp right out in the middle of them. Take about three nights, maybe seven. I can picture God saying, Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. When you need me, call me. Yeah. Uh, Come on. What's God asking you? What's God asking you? What's God asking you if this can happen? Because for us, so many times, we'll kill it before it even starts. That's right. Son of man, can these bones live? Now, here's a young preacher. The God's come by, said, I'm going to give you a church. I want you to look at this. I'm going to give you a ministry. I've got a calling on your life. I'm going to show you where I need you. And da da, he drops him down right there and he takes a good hard look. And no doubt, he probably won't turn around and say, Are you sure we got the address right? But the Spirit made him, it caused him. Now I want you to see where I placed you. Now I want to ask you a question. Because I want to know what you believe. I want to know what you think of me. I want to know if you think they can live. Because maybe I've got the wrong man for the job, Ezekiel. I want to know what's in your heart. I want to, this is the hardest generation to even preach in today. Because most Christians don't believe in what they say they believe. That's what she preached not long ago. God's just looking for believers that really believe. God took Ezekiel down there and said, Ezekiel, take a good look around, son. they very dry. Not only that, somebody's tore them all up. There's a bone over here and a bone over there. You remember that herd of mustard? Bones everywhere. They're just scattered. No skin, no meat left on them, no nothing. Ezekiel, can they live? Come on, preacher. Can they live? And he says, Lord, you know. Lord, you know, probably the best answer that we could possibly ever give. You know what it means? It means I'm counting on you. It means I'm putting 100% confidence in you. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it up to you, Lord. God, you know, you know. You know what God's looking for today? He's looking for people that 100% rely on Him. If God don't do it, then it don't get done. That's all He needs is somebody that just says, you know what? Oh, God knows if we can. God knows if we can sing and it get anointed. God knows if we can preach. 
God knows if we can do these things. God's looking for somebody that just knows He's able. No, oh, the Bible says He's more than abundantly able. My God. Now look at here. We go on down. That's the first thing. Somebody put down number one. I usually don't preach like this, but I want you to remember this. Number one was He asked you to question, can it happen? Can it happen? He's asking you. He's The Lord's inquiring of you. My God, I want you to go on down now. The Bible says here in verse number 4 that God said, okay, prophesy. You know what He's saying to him? I want you to preach. But watch what you preach. He says, I, again, He said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you today, you know why a lot of us got in trouble? We heard a lot of preaching, but it wasn't God's Word. Right. We heard a lot of stuff be covered in the pulpit that just yes. wasn't God's Word. Number two is preach God's Word. Number two is bring God's Word back on the scene. He said, I want you to prophesy. Hear ye the words of the Lord. You know, it's nice if I walk up to you and I tell you, you know what? You're going to get a job. You're going to get a job just because I'm speaking out of faith. But when the God puts it down in me and He says, Son of man, I want you to prophesy to that brother. I want you to tell him, don't you worry about nothing. Oh, my God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Son of man, I want you to preach. Preach to these bones. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So here's the next thing. That number two is prophesy God's word. Get a hold of a word. Get a hold of a word. Yes. Get back in God's word. Yeah. This is what our church and every other church needs to be. Yeah. Getting back to God's word. Amen. Oh, I listened to a preacher last night, Brother Ray. Me and Clayton went down there. We took a bass and a guitar. Uh, we didn't know that all the, all the music would be a bass and a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. We got down there, and I don't like to sing without Becky, and most of you know that. I have stepped out a little a little bit more so, without her. But we got down there last night, and they had one, one other person that could sing, and they sung one song. And we practically begged her, didn't we? Would you please sing some more? No, I'm done. I ain't singing no more. <laughs> Brother Ray likes to sing us to death. That's just true. We went down there, man. We got up front. And he's like, we'll sing another one. We'll sing another one. We'll do this one. And do that one. I'm looking at Clayton and he's looking at me. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. We got back down there at the altar call. My God, Ray preached good. He preached on his time to shout. He preached about going around the walls of Jericho seven times. But the Lord said to shout before the victory. Sometimes that's what he preached on. You, that, that then when God gives you that word, shout. The walls ain't moved, but you gotta shout. Sometimes that's what he preached on. Yeah. Well, we we got enough through there, and he's preaching on that. We done the altar call. Now I think this is so good because you just gotta listen for the word of God. Yeah. We're up there, and we'd already sung about four songs, uh, and we'd already sung "I'll Fly Away." <laughs> we 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 went from the slow up to the gradual, and we got up to that, one. and the church was doing good. Ray looked at the pastor, and the pastor looked at Ray, and they both turned around and looked at me and Clayton. And I thought, okay, we're getting ready to end. We're getting ready, they're getting ready to say, okay, we're done. We've done four songs already. Uh, you, know, you know how it is. Absolutely. But I knew in my spirit, I told Clayton about this, it's bound up. I said, it's bound up because the spirit is more than the people are receiving. I knew it. I, I could feel it. It, it was good. It was good. We're going to get there in this text in a minute. It was good, uh -huh. but it just wasn't what God wanted. Uh -huh. And I got to thinking about Ray Priest on shouting. Ray Priest on his time to shout. And they looked at me. Both of them looked at me. And I knew it could go either way at this point. Because they was looking, you got another song or are you ready? And I, I, and, and I said, can I say something? And they said, sure. And I said, I remember when God brought them through the Red Sea. And they got on the other side of the Red Sea. And Moses turned around and put his hand up over the sea and God closed it up. And I said, then Mary, Moses' sister, said, bring me my tambourine. Bring me a tambourine. And all the church is looking at me. 
And I said, you know what? What she was saying is, is I want to give God a shout, but I only know how to do it one way. Bring me my tambourine. That's, that's how I worship God for that tambourine. Oh, so they bring her a tambourine. And the next seven days, Barry's out there shouting. I told them, I said, you know what? I said, I'm not going to tell you the denomination that I grew up in. I use wisdom when I'm not at home. I said, I'm not going to tell you the church I grew up in, but I can tell you that when we sung, we didn't have no guitars. And when we sung, we didn't have no bass. And we didn't have no drums. And we didn't have no pianos. But when the Spirit moved, we shout. And we were up there, and, 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 and we just done I'll Fly Away. And we'd done it with the music, and it was going good. And I said, but this is how we did it back home. Well, some that morning, no music at all. Brother Ray grabs the mic. Their pastor grabs the mic. People back in the back stand up to their feet. We're all singing out fly away, no music, and it breaks wide open. Oh! My God, he said, prophesy the words of the Lord. Amen. Prophesy the words of the Lord. Amen. Now I want you to look what happens whenever he brought God's word onto the scene. The Bible says that he done what God told him to do. That he prophesied to those bones and he said, Hear ye the words of the Lord. You'll know if God's hands on somebody because they'll bring a word from God. You'll know if God took them out in the spirit because the, the word of the Lord will come up out of them. Now listen a minute. He prophesied on them bones. The Bible says the chenou. The Bible says the flesh. The Bible says that their skin, all this stuff come back up on them. Oh, listen a minute now. In verse number 6, And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Everything's about giving God some glory. So he prophesied in verse number 7, And there come a noise. Oh, somebody say there come a noise. When you get God's Word, an anointed preacher, if you get an anointed singer, you get in church house, oh, and then you start obeying God's will, there are always come a noise. Stay with me now. And then a shaking. My God, how many how many has ever heard of uh, the Quakers? Oh, yeah. You ever heard of Quakers and the Shakers? You ever heard of them? They get under the anointing. <laughs> well, my God, I would use your example, but I ain't going to. <laughs> but they get under the anointing, my God, and they be begin to shake. Uh, oh, preach, Brother Robert. Because whenever the word went out, oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God's looking for some leaders in the church this hour. God needs some people that will say, oh, it may not look good, but hear what God's got to say. The Bible says there came a noise and there came a shaking. I started thinking about that shaking because God needs men and women that will be bold in this hour. I know that sometimes it's hard. Listen a minute, I know what I'm doing. When Peter went down there in the book of Acts and he preached in the name of Jesus, they locked him up and they beat him. Anybody ever took a beating? Maybe not a physical beating. Anybody getting a beating every once in a while just for serving God? My God. Am I going to have But the Bible says he got locked up in jail. And they, and they beat him and they released him. But they said, don't you pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. You know what he done? He got out and he got on his knees. He went down to the local church house. And I don't know if he's a member there. He just went and found him a house of God. And he got down and he began to pray. And you know what he prayed for? Give me boldness. Give me boldness. God's looking for men and women today that's praying for boldness. Give me boldness, God. Give me boldness. If I'm going to do this, give me some boldness in me. Oh, my God. You know what happened? The Bible says that God shook the house where he was praying. Have you ever prayed till God shook you? Yes. Have you ever prayed until the place you was praying just began to shake? Yes. The Bible said there was a noise and then a shaking. Yeah, oh my God. And this preacher up there preaching. God's giving him a people to preach to. Oh, they don't look like they alive. But he begins to preach under the anointing of God. He begins to speak God's word. Oh, and there become a noise and a shaking. Now listen a minute. The Bible said in the end of verse 7, and the bones came together bone to his bone. Amen. There ain't nothing that can, that can bring back together what the world separates but God. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. How long have I got? A little bit of time? Oh, go on. The preacher and priest tonight, I got saved at 10 years old. His name was Brother Henry Cox. Henry Cox. Well, that's really all I knew other than he had a son named Rick Cox. I didn't know a lot about him. He was, he'd come and held a revival. Year, years later, I'd learn more. 
after I got married. I was 10 when I got saved. I was 23 when I got married. So about 14 or 15 years go by. And one day I'm sitting down there with Becky's daddy, Ray. And we're talking about church. And I, I told him, I said, yeah, I got saved when I was 10. I said, Henry Cox, the man preaching, I'll never forget it. And he said, now, Henry. And he said, let me tell you a story. And I said, okay. Now, I know Henry's wife is Fern. He said, Henry and Fern had just got married when we were young, teenagers. And I said, okay. And he said, and things weren't going good for him. Henry was out drinking all the time. And Fern wanted a divorce. And then she kicked him out and said, if you can't stop that drinking, you can't be here in this hall. Now listen a minute. So she kicked Henry out. Oh, and Henry and Ray, Becky's daddy, decided they were going to go out and bar. You know how it is. If your buddy gets kicked out of the house, you want to cheer him up. You don't cheer him up at the church. You take him out. So he, Ray takes him out. They get out there and they're having a little bit to drink. They decide just to go down the road and see if they can get in some trouble. True story. But they pass a little church that says revival on the sign outside. Oh, here they come. Ray said that they were sitting there and he said I, uh, Henry was really distraught but he said even though we've been drinking I had enough sense in me to tell him Henry if you really want help maybe we ought to stop and go in there. And Henry said you know Ray we've been drinking. And he said well that's alright. We, we won't bother nobody. We'll just go in and sit down. They come in the back door of that church and they sit down. Listen now folks. True story. In a little while that preacher gave an invitation. Henry got up and went to that altar that night and asked the Lord to save his soul. Been out at bar just hours before this. Said, asked the Lord if he would save him. After church, he told Ray, he said, Ray, drive me home. I want to go back to Fern. I want to tell her what the Lord's done, how he saved me. They ended up having about five kids. Rick held revivals, Henry held revivals, and Henry was the preacher the night I got saved. Don't tell me that it looks like it's dead and God can't make a way. There seems to be no way. You need to just speak and prophesy the Word of God over somebody's life. So here there's a noise and there's a shaking. My God. I want you to look so. He prophesied in verse 7. And bone came to his bone. Churches that are divided today. I've never seen a beating all my life. Just about three weeks ago, a church that's precious to me went through another split. Oh, went through a split and then the pastor got up the next Sunday and said, I'm done. I'm resigning. Called me. I went to visit him on Monday. Oh, I had a talk with him. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that God can do it, folks. Yeah. Things that's been broken yeah. apart in our generation. Yeah. Too many people are saying they're dead. Well, if they ain't four feet underground and they ain't in a tomb with a rock in front of them, and they just laying out there dead, somebody needs to get a hold of power of God and bring some resurrection back into this thing in America today. Yeah. Now listen yeah. a minute. He beholds in verse number 8. And in the end of verse 8, he says, but there's no breath in them. This is where our church is messed up. This is where our church is messed up. Because we love the noise. And we love the shaking. We love to preach enough of God's Word to get a whoo! We love to preach enough of God's Word to get somebody going. Oh, praise God. Stay with me. This is the way God dealt with me on this story. We love it whenever we preached enough to dead things. Yep. Do we hear the noise? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But now this is a preacher, a young preacher. He don't know any better. All you preachers know what I'm saying right there. He don't know any better. He's not satisfied with just there being some noise. Uh -huh. He ain't satisfied with just there being some shaking. Oh, Jerry Lee, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably described the church of the 50s. <laughs> Today it wouldn't be that way at all. Because really, our, most of the time in our churches, we would rather have mannequins. Yep. Think about it for a minute. Sure. You've been to the department store lately? Yep. You can dress them how you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can put the right clothes on them. You can bring them in. You can see them. Nice. Mm -hmm. yep. A lot of our churches today ain't got no fire. Ain't got no no uh, anointing. Right. But they look good. They look real good. I went into some of them department stores. I went in over there in Sears and, and literally looked, looked at some of these mannequin guys that got and walked up and... Well, dude, that ain't realistic. I mean, they, they can look good. Put any clothes on them, any hat on them, any makeup on them. 
walk by and want to think it's real. Be like, hey, she ain't looking back. She just right there. Mannequin churches. A lot of preachers preach just like that, don't they, Sister Carla? Yeah. We get everybody looking alike. We get everybody dressing alike. Everybody got their hair alike. Yeah. Oh, we in church now. Right. Preach with me. We in church now. Amen. Or else we get to the point where we enjoy the noise. Woo! We like it that it's noisy. We like the shaking that's going on. But this preacher said, hold it a minute. He said, but there was no breath in them. Man, those bones came back together. The flesh came up on them. The skin came up on them. They're dressed back in their uniform. But they ain't got no life. This is where God's told me about our churches today. I believe it with all my heart. It's a lot more than the noise, folks. If you're looking for a noise, you can be in a cave like Elijah and there come an earthquake and a wind and a fire and God not be in none of that, but God still be in a still small voice. Oh, come on now, preach with me. Because the preacher's got to sit there and look at you sometimes and say, you know what, you look good, but you're dead. Yeah. My God, it takes some boldness to be able to look in this generation to show up in a church and preach to a bunch of people making a bunch of noise and say, but there ain't no anointing. My God, somebody preach with me tonight. Oh, my God. It takes the anointing. Yes. It destroys the yoke. It takes the anointing of God. Elijah stood up and said, hold it, man. They look good. My God, they look good. But they ain't got no breath in them. They ain't breathing. They're not alive. There's, not, there's nothing breathing in here. Yes, My God. Yes, and most of us will say, oh, well, they made some noise for a while. If they make some noise, we had a good service. Give them a high five, and let's just go on. Somebody got up and down there on shake. It looked, it looked like they was alive. That wasn't alive. That was deliverance. That was just God bringing it back together. My God. When you got to be pulled out of something that you've been stuck in for a long time, it takes some shaking. Say, come on. Prophesied the word of God. Amen. That preacher went up there, he opened his Bible and said, Thus saith the Lord. Amen. That's exactly what he said. Amen. And it caused something to start happening. Yeah, but then he looked. My God, he looked and he said, But there ain't no breath in And the Lord said, Prophesy. Ooh, that's so good. Amen. My God, you're getting better all the time. Amen. Amen. You're still holding back a little bit because when your mama preaches, you don't hold that back. I think you're scared of her or something. Oh, God. Oh, God. Just tell me how it is, brother. Okay. The Lord says, prophesy for the wind. Oh, God. Now, let's talk about that. Prophesy to the wind. Because Jesus said, man can't live off bread alone. But every word that perceives Oh, every word that perceives. You hear that? It's a movement. Thank you. He said, prophesy to the wind. Oh, God. It's the same pattern as Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth was about form. Void and darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Lord prophesied. The Lord spoke. The Lord said, let there be light. There come God's word. But then it says, the Spirit of the Lord moved. Oh, God. The Spirit of the Lord moved. Oh, God. He's saying, preacher, you preach God's Word. There's been something happened. Somebody's about to get it. Now you need me to show up on the scene. That's what he said. He said, prophesy to the wind. And say, oh, wind. Oh, God, I need you right now. Paul says, Amen. He said unto me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy, son of man. Say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come 
Oh, you see that one word? You guys that know me well know this one word means everything to me. Because you get the revelations. Come, Lord Jesus. Even now, come. Oh, somebody say that. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, so he says, Son of man, say to the wind, come from the four winds, O breath. What is that breath? I said it before when we were still in the singing part of service. God breathed the breath of life. Oh, God. Somebody's saying, well, hold on a minute now. Ah, come on now. Those things are laying out in the open valley. They ought not to have died. They ought not to have died. I don't know if it was an army that got defeated. I don't know if it was somebody that somebody walked off from them and left them. I don't know if it was people that just counted on the economy or counted on their government. I don't know why they were left just open in the valley. But I know that nobody showed them no mercy. Nobody cared for them. Nobody went down there and preached a eulogy to them. Nobody took a shovel down there and said, you know, they at least deserve a decent burial. No, they just left out there in the open because God said they ought not to have died. They ought to have stood up and I need a preacher that I don't mind the prophesy. I need a preacher that I go out there and prophesy to them. And say, oh, you win. Oh, Brent. My God, you know what God's saying? God's saying, the preacher, can they live? You know, Lord. All right. Because I'm going to go with you now. Because you count on me completely. Yeah. He says, now, preacher, here's the word you're going to preach. Okay, Lord. I preached it. Lord, they look a whole lot better. But something's missing. God says, that's because you've done all you can do. I told a young sister the Lord this week. I said, I'll go with you as far as I can. But that's as far as I can take you. But at that point, God will take you. Oh, my God, God will take you. We're in that point of the service with Ezekiel right now where God's saying, you ain't done. you got to prophesy to me. you got to invite me now. He said, when my church invites me back in, oh, Father. Oh, I feel it down inside me tonight. He said, when, they're, when they get tired of just having the noise, Amen. My God. Oh, yes. And they invite me back in. Because somebody will say, you know what, we go to church, but we don't see a whole lot happen these days. We need God to show up. Oh, I'm telling you, that's what we need. God said, prophesy to the wind and say, breath, oh, breath, breathe upon these slain. Amen. Did you catch that? They ain't dry bones no more. They ain't very dry bones no more. They're just slain now. That means one thing. That means they didn't die by choice. Because the slain means they were killed. They've been slain. Now he's not calling them dry bones no more. He said prophesy. Somebody's killed them. And he needs you. How I many has been in a church where somebody's killed them? But it just needs God. So I prophesied. Oh yeah. That's that part where you say, I've done all I can do. Now I'm letting the Lord take over. Oh yeah. So I prophesied and the breath came into them and they lived. Oh my God. The breath came in and they lived. Listen to that. And stood up upon their feet. You'll know a church that's getting ready to move. Amen. Oh, you'll know the positioning. God's moved some of you into position right here in the last year. Getting you in position to take off on the move. Amen? Amen. 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 I believe that by my heart. But now look at them. They were an exceeding great army. What does that mean? Why wouldn't it just be a great army? Why an exceeding great? You just experienced exceeding great. It would have been great. He got saved the first night. Oh, I felt that. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be great? It'd be great if he got saved the second night. It sure would have been good. Would it take six months? Six months? I just ain't into that. It just don't make me happy like you guys. 
You guys go ahead and you ain't going to bother me. I'll just sit over here and watch. Everything's fine. I got my problems. But God said right after the preacher's preach, and the preacher says, Come now, Lord. Come right now, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, right now. Into this service. We've got them already standing, Lord. I just need you to move. It's an exceeding abundantly more than you could ask. Ah, that's what he's saying. It was an exceeding great army. That's the same wording that goes, but you are more than a conqueror. We're more than a conqueror. We can conquer it, but we're more than a conqueror. We gotta bring us through this thing. I got a post somebody this week. I want to be up here whenever they're singing. And I feel like doing that, and I'm always sitting there thinking, my guitar is my excuse, my guitar is my excuse, my guitar is my excuse. I do that. You might not hear it, but the Lord hears it. The Lord said, you are without excuse, O son of man, because I feel like saying, yeah! My God, my God's able. Exceeding great army. I brought this tonight. I was going to read out of it, but I ain't even going to read out of it. It's just some stuff from my hometown. People that are dealing in drugs. They rated 10 of them. The oldest was 74. Yeah. Mm. You don't think the devil's got some dry things out there? You don't think the devil's got some things out there that look dead? The church would already sit there and say, well, ain't no hope for her. 74-year-old woman selling Oxycontin in McQuarrie County, Kentucky. 44-year-old man. I'm 48. 44-year-old man. Down there selling heroin. They busted 10 of them. They wrote, did a big write-up on it. Busted 10 of them. In that same newspaper, it's got a picture of a young man that I know. He grew up right around the road from my house. Played basketball in our basketball court. This, this week he was arrested because he raped a woman, took her out in the woods, and left her. It took her two days just to find the railroad tracks. And a train stopped when they saw her walking on the railroad tracks and got her back to the authorities. And then they find out it's that guy that I know personally. You don't think there's some stuff out there that needs somebody to preach to it? Needs somebody to say, this is the word of the Lord. I come just to preach today. And then listen to God. And God says, now prophesy to the wind. Now prophesy to the wind. Now tell them, Holy Ghost, come and fill this body. Holy Ghost, breathe on this church. Holy Ghost, breathe on this marriage. Holy Ghost, breathe on my child. Holy Ghost, breathe on my piano. Holy Ghost, breathe on my body. said too many things in our lives we've accepted as dead. Come on. Thank you. John 11, chapter 11, verse 34 says this, said he, show me where ye laid him. Talking about Martha and Mary. Where did you lay your breath? Listen a minute, what's so fascinating about that? Where was the last time you made point of contact. 